Welcome to video number two. This is going to cover the topic of once your seeds have sprouted and they're showing the little white root or they're maybe even starting to form their first leaf, you want to get them in soil so they can really start to establish and do their thing. So I'm going to go over kind of the basics of getting your seeds potted up um what you should do and how to sort of get them growing and situated before they really start putting on growth and we go to the next step which is seedling care and problems that you may encounter and all that good stuff so this will be another fun project um one thing you want to use if you can if you can find it is seed starting mix it is much different than potting soil it's a lot lighter and it just allows the root to go easier and more conveniently into um, the soil. Sometimes potting mi mixes are pretty dense, um, but if you get a good quality one, you won't have too much of a problem. Uh, but con containers. So you can grow in pretty much any container that you have. You can get creative with this step. You can use little yogurt cups to start. The, the important thing I'm, I use um, red solo cups. The important thing, you have to add the drainage holes to the bottom. I take a wood burning tool and I just poke holes um, outside because it does stink if you're using plastic. <laughs> you don't want to do that in the basement of your house because your house will smell for like weeks. Um, but anyway, any container that you're using, just make sure that you put adequate drainage holes in because um, the worst thing you can do for your seedlings is water them and have it just sit in there and then your roots get root rot and your all your time is wasted so a very simple step but one that you may not think to do before you begin also if you're reusing containers make sure that you bleach them or add bleach into a water um, solution and clean them well um, usually they say 10% bleach to the amount of water you're using, just enough to kill any bacteria that might still be in there or any pathogens that are still stuck to your containers. Um, that's important. If you're using new containers, you don't have to do anything, uh, but that's the gist of it. So you can use whatever you want, just make sure they're clean and you can accomplish that by using the, the bleach and water solution. Once they're dry, then you have seeds that have sprouted which most likely will look like these tiny little things. Um, they will either be barely starting, and that's fine, see the little tiny white root there, or you can have forgotten to check on them for a while, and then they really start putting out this tall, long root. Um, either way, honestly, you can plant them at any stage that they're at, um, whenever you find them, but if they've germinated, you can get them into the soil. So what I'm going to do is tell you, once you have the seed starting mix, make sure it's pre-moistened. Um, if you're using like, uh, if you're growing a lot of seedlings and you're using a sort of a growing um, medium, like Pro Mix, they have those big compressed bales that you use um, or that you can buy to save on like bags of, bot of seed starting mix. If you're gonna use that, make sure you pre-moisten it because most of the time it comes and it's totally dry and stuck together and all compressed down. You really wanna fluff up your soil, add the water before you put it in the containers. Trust me on that one. I've learned that lesson too. Um, and you really wanna just, you don't want your soil sopping wet, but you wanna be able to make like, Kind of squeeze it in your hand and have it stay together but not so that there's water coming out so you just want it moist and you'll be able to tell the difference between dry and wet potting mix um, or seed starting mix once you have it kind of perfectly ready to go grab your container and for this sake i'm just gonna i'm using like a deep um cell tray insert and i use the deep ones because daylily roots if you use the shorter, let me see if I have one. I'm gonna show you this one right here. So this little seed starting tray. Oh my God, it's stuck. All right, we're not gonna show you that one. Okay, see how this is sort of shallow? What is that, like three inches deep? This one just gives you a couple more inches. I think this is a five inch, either four or five inch. Um, 
give your daylily root some room to go down because it is going to get long and it is going to start spreading. These cell trays um, are only going to be good for a certain amount of time. And you're going to know because they're going to, the roots are going to start to come out the bottom, then it's time to pot up. But for now, this will give you a good couple weeks um, worth of time, basically to buy your time in order before you have to pot up your, your seedlings. So if you can do the deeper inserts or a deeper um, solo cup or whatever container you're using, it's much better than starting in a shallow container. I'd ra you'd rather go deeper than wider when it comes to daylily seedlings. And that is only if you're gonna, um, only if you want to avoid having to pot up like every week. So for now, we're gonna pot up in these. This is a little six pack. And when you fill up your trays, don't pat them down really hard. Don't compact the soil in there. You're gonna kind of keep it fluffy. You're just gonna fill it up like this. You're gonna this. dig like a cat would in, in the litter box. Oh my God. You can lightly tamp down with your fingers. Another way to make sure that you have all your soil settled in the, the um, containers is to tamp it down. And this works better if it's in a tray with a whole bunch of weight, but you can tamp it down, the soil will settle, and then you can just refill if there's any, um, any of the little cells that need a little extra filling. So you basically wanna fill this to the brim. And then when you plant these guys, not that difficult. You are just gonna plant them so that they're a little the little, obviously the white root goes down. You're gonna poke a little hole with your finger, drop them in so that the seed is probably like a quarter of an inch to maybe a half inch below the soil and just kind of lightly tamp that down. If it has a longer root on it, be careful not to push it down because you could break that tip off and you don't wanna do that. So again, just make a little indentation and the soil should be fluffy also. Um, which is why we don't tamp it down, but you're just gonna cover it. So it's like a quarter of an inch to a half inch, sort of tamp it with your finger, but don't push down and that's it. You're gonna leave that under the soil. If you have a little bit of room and you wanna backfill and, and just make that level again, you can. So I have two potted up in here. That's as simple as it is. You're gonna wait for that daylily seed to get that root down there and then it's gonna start to sprout its first leaf. It's gonna be very exciting when you see the little head poking through the soil, I'm gonna tell you. I think Toby's excited. He thinks you're demonstrating his new litter box. <laughs> what are you doing, Toby? What are you doing, Toby? What do you think, Toby? Did she tap it down properly? He wants he wants food and water. He yes, doesn't want he does. anything else. Um, so anyway, also make sure you label. If you're growing different ones and you care, what you're, you know, care to know which one is which, uh, make sure you set a label in your little squares, depending on how many you're growing and how many different varieties. And then once this is done, this is a little bit of a, this is a tip that I actually started um, using last year. Vermiculite is super helpful in stopping your grow light from creating algae on top of the soil because nothing's really happening there. So you have like moist soil, you have the grow light shining on it for weeks on end. A lot of times you get that green algae that grows on there. One thing that will help it not form, actually, it will help it stop forming or limit how much happens is if you take vermiculite and you just cover it. It's basically a coating to stop the grow light from hitting the soil. So it kind of shades it. And then it doesn't, you don't have to worry about the algae as much. And the algae doesn't really hurt anything. You can like scrape it off if it happens. I've done that, you know, for the last couple years. Uh, but last year I did use the vermiculite and it does help. It looks like oatmeal. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's like, it's got like a gold kind of shiny hue to it. Is um, that how they grow granola bars? What? What is wrong with you? Oh. I'm not even entertaining that question. So anyway, look, so this is, this is a tray that I have started. Oh, look, I actually planted this up. I only have two seeds in the 
pot, but just for the sake of demonstration, this then would get watered in. And you are not gonna use the hydrogen peroxide water solution that you used to germinate your seeds. You're gonna just use plain water. Don't use ice cold water. Nothing, the seedlings will hate, hate, hate ice cold water <laughs> at, at any point during your watering process. Do not use ice cold water. It like, it, it's like taking your, uh, yourself and throwing yourself outside in a snowbank with no coat or anything. Just don't do that, it's not nice. Um, It'll probably shock them. Anyway, um, use like room temperature water. So if you get like a gallon of water, fill it up, just leave it out almost like you would use a gallon of water and leave it by your Christmas tree to fill up the little, um, you know, the tree stand. Leave it at room temperature. If you have room temperature water, that is great. Don't use hot water, just use regular old room temperature water. Um, and you're gonna water from the top the first time that you plant them in so that you kind of get all those air pockets out of there and you really saturate your soil. You should always have a tray or some type of um, device to catch the extra water that's gonna come out of there. But you don't want it to sit in water. So you want like a good well draining um, system and some place that the water can go. These trays are good because they have grooves in the bottom. So any of the excess water, you kind of have a way for it to like sit without actually being absorbed if your soil is already saturated um what else so yes water that in you have your labels um next thing you should do in order to keep the soil consistently moist you can either throw a little bit of saran wrap over this you can also use a humidity dome um, you can just be really good about making sure that you mist these and keep them evenly moist until you start to see the sprouts happen. It's very important that at this point, because we've put them in already sprouted, that you don't let them dry out all the way. If you do, that could be the end of your seedling. I happen to do these in big trays, and this is a humidity dome. I just put it on like this. After I've watered in um, the first initial planting, I leave this just like that. I have my light on and I'm waiting for that first little sprout to come out. Um, once I see the sprout, and it's gonna look like this guy right here. See this little dude? Hello, he's the first one of the season. Welcome to our little place, little guy. He's so cute. Oh look, and, I'm gonna, and I have a little guy here. The first official two day lily seedlings. Anyway, that's what your little sprouts are gonna look like. As soon as you see that, take the humidity dome off all of it. Especially if you're only using one cover. If you have saran wrap over this one and this one separately, you can leave the ones that haven't sprouted yet, but definitely take off the saran wrap or the humidity domes. That is how damping off happens. That is how you basically rot your seedlings. They want just air, they want airflow. Um, the humidity domes or saran wrap or whatever you're using to keep the, the moisture in the containers while they're growing, whatever you use, don't, just don't leave them on. You, it's just asking for trouble. No questions or comments from you? My back is warm from the furnace. <laughs> Are you, are you dying was, of heat? You know what, actually, I yeah, have this on. We I went, think I have heat stroke or I know, something I actually don't here. need this this thing on. We went outside earlier because the kids were riding their quads and I was like freezing cold. And now I'm like dying in the basement. Because yeah, it's so hot. It was, when that furnace kicked on, it was like an unwanted massage. Mm. Oh. Although this is why I love the grow room. I mean, love it for a grow room because it's nice and warm, like naturally. It's warm, but it seems like every time you do a video, the furnace does kick on. It is. It's noisy, for sure. <clears throat> yeah. Um, anyway, so what else? So we have the potting up. We have the seed depth. We have um, the vermiculite going on top. We have them watered in. You can place a cover over top of them to keep your soil moist, especially if you have a really dry environment. Um, you don't want that soil to dry out at all. And then you're just waiting for these cute little green sprouts to come out. And then you know you're on your way. That's exciting. These are your babies. So anyway, so all of these are gonna eventually grow up and then 
we're gonna end up waiting until you start to really get root bound in the in the containers and it will happen fast once they sprout they go fast i'm warning you um but it's exciting and they get bigger and bigger and you really just want to continue to pot them up if you have the space Sometimes I take my most prized ones and I'll pop them up into bigger one gallon containers when the time is right. And all the other ones kind of get stuck staying in solo size cups until like May. So if you're, if you're limited on space, you know, do the best that you can. Just keep them well fed and watered. Uh, but this is, the, this is the next step after germination is just to get them potted up. Keep the soil consistently moist. Keep the, the vermiculite, if you have it, is a great, it's just a great resource to use um, to keep that algae growth from happening. And once you see the sprouts, take all the covers off and you wanna keep your lights. This is another thing. When your day lilies finally sprout through the soil, your light is gonna come, get your light as close to the sprouts as you can without burning them. If you have a grow light that is a T5 bulb, there's no heat. So I can put mine within a couple inches of the seedling pots. Um, however, if you use a shop light or a fluorescent light, you have to be careful about scorching because they put off a ton of heat. Like I wouldn't even be able to put my hand there. Um, so depending on what type of light you're using, you'll have to gauge how far you can keep them from your seedlings. But you want to keep them as close and as bright as possible while they're growing um, without scorching them. So if you have a if you have a grow light that doesn't put off heat, it's great because you can put them literally two inches over. And then as they grow, you just raise the lights up, which is why I have these on chain links um, and S hooks, because I can adjust this light as they grow. So that is another thing. But we'll get into that also in the last video, which is um, where we're going to cover once they start getting bigger, when to pop them up, um, problems you might see um, or pests you might encounter while you're growing them indoors because it happens, um, fertilizing, when to feed them, depending on what type of soil mix you're using to pop them up. So we'll cover lots of other stuff and how to tend, tend to them as they get bigger and as it gets more exciting. But for now, this is all you're going to do with your sprouted seedlings. So if you've started your seeds uh, based on the last video or you've already got them in the works, this is your next step. So I wouldn't then, use this as a thumbnail. What? For this shot right here. Why? Because it kind of looks like the bake sale we had at Bosey's right here. <laughs> really? It's, yeah. Kind of looks like you're having a bake sale from you here. Know, a little, a little crumb topping. Yeah. These would be a lot more expensive than what you sold at your bake sale. Well, I have to get some. I have to get some uh, vermiculite on this, um, and I have to water them in. I actually did some planting already of ones that have sprouted, and now I have to add my vermiculite. Have to water them in and put the lid on. But a lot of these are starting to finally poke through, and these seeds were started on December uh, December eighteenth. So. It's been 10 days and I have my first two sprouts coming through the soil. They actually started germinating four days after, so on the 22nd, but it's taken until now for that first leaf to come out. So there is a little bit of a process, but we're underway. Is, so, it, is it early this year? It just seems like you're doing this a lot earlier. Last year, I did it two weeks before Christmas. So... I'm late. You're late. <laughs> Yes, it really depends on how long you want to take care of your seedlings and how big you can allow them to get before spring comes and you can harden them off because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of care. It's a lot of fertilizing. It's a lot of checking on them. It's a lot of making sure they don't dry out while they're in their pots as they get bigger. So I'm trying to remember what you did before this. Before what? Like in the winter, before you really started using all these lights um, like what did you do grow. like five years ago i did not grow over the winter how did i you... started the funny thing is i bought a grow light it was a single bulb four foot reflector grow light and it was it had its own little little tea stand and it could fit two trays this size like long ways it could fit that many plants so whatever i decided to grow i originally bought it for vegetable plants so i would wait until like 
February, I think, was the earliest that I ever started seeds because onions get started in February because they take so long and you kind of want them a pencil thick before they go outside. So I would start in February and that was the first thing I ever grew. And then I ordered from, I ordered daylilies from uh, Blue Ridge daylilies. And if you know about them, they are amazing sellers. They have, when they send you fans of whatever you purchase, they're expensive, but you get like clumps of daylilies. They'll say they're sending you a double fan and you'll get like three or four. Not, don't hold me to that, but literally you get, and they're massive fans. I don't know how they get their daylilies so big. I think it's because they're a little bit warmer of a zone than we are. They're in North Carolina. Um, but that started my craze because once I had all those pretties in my yard, then I, I learned that I could make my own crosses. And then it was like, oh, and then I save seeds. And if I want to see them bloom... I'll do what everybody else is doing and grow them over the winter so that I can see them bloom the first year because I'm impatient and I want to see, I don't want to wait three years to see a bloom. So that kind of started me like, okay, no, maybe I'll just grow a few seeds. I bought some crosses off the Lily auction. I bought some crosses off Facebook groups and here we are today where now I'm growing my own crosses and I'm buying a little bit more high end crosses. Um, from some of the some of the most awesome hybridizers out there so that's exciting and then I get to see the babies I mean last year was fun remember when I got that striped daylily do you remember when I found it It was like oh I finally got one with stripes on the on the sepal petals I was excited about that um I also made a couple crosses of my own that bloomed and were gorgeous and huge and then some that were absolutely not pretty and I probably won't keep but you know, that's the fun, the anticipation of like, what are these going to produce? I cannot wait. So anyway, but that's the next step. That is video number two. Wow. Did I yap too much? No, you kept it short and sweet, just I like did? we discussed. I could go, I could go all day. Is it, did I forget anything? Well, if I did, if you have questions, just um, put them in the comments because we are going to, you know, I do try to respond to, to questions that come up. Um, you know, some things that I missed because I'm sort of like used to doing this. So if there's something that I've missed or I didn't cover or that wasn't clear, just ask in the comments. Also, I have on January 3rd at 7 p.m., I'm going to open up a live room on Facebook and that is going to allow anybody. It's a public room basically where you can join. It's kind of like a Zoom meeting if you're familiar with that, but we can all get in there and connect. So if you're growing daylilies and you want to show off what you're growing and sprouting, or if you have questions or you just want to connect and see what everybody's, you know, little grow light setups look like, um, or just hang out and have fun and connect with other gardeners. Uh, that's going to be the first time that we're doing that. So that's exciting. I'm excited about that. Whole Am I invited setup. to that? I don't um, know. I don't want to be. I haven't, I haven't officially sent your invitation, well, but it is a public room. You could sneak in if it's you It's going to get lost in the mail. When you go to add yourself in, it's, I have to approve it. And I'll just, depending on my mood that day or how much you've annoyed me or not. I, I guess I'll let you in. I here. think I'm working that day. Yes. Well, no, seven o'clock at night. Oh. Because, you know, that's our only day off is Tuesdays with, with regard to the kids and their activities. So. Wow. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited to see, like, what's happening and who's growing and see put faces to names and other than Facebook profiles and that kind of thing. But I think it'll be fun. It's something that we can all do and connect together. So. Uh, but anyway, if you have any questions regarding this next step, um, shoot me a message or ask in the comments. And video number three, when we get a little bit bigger and a little more progressed in the size of the day lilies, we'll cover some things that might come up as you're growing them and as they're getting bigger and as they're maturing. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, Leah, I can't wait. Let's hope, <laughs> let's hope uh, you know, I can film with the... Uh, the uh, pipe burns on my back. I know. It is, they do get hot. Man. Yeah, they get hot. That was a horrible angle. Oh, I my know. goodness. Oh, you know what, though? It almost like a sauna in here. Yeah. yeah I put those hot rocks on you. I, I, here I am. I'm keeping the camera steady going. Does she smell my back hair burning? <laughs> you, know. you didn't even care. Yeah. 
Hey, the cat can handle it. Uh, I'm gonna the, feed the cat. Yeah. It's time to feed the cat. All right. So All right. stay tuned for video number three. That will be coming up in about oh maybe probably two weeks or so. So there'll be a little bit of a gap because the, the seedlings need to get bigger. But if you have questions, January third, seven PM or Facebook or YouTube comments, all you can catch me there. All right. Toby, don't do anything we wouldn't do down here, buddy.